Welcome to the video everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today in this edition where we will be looking at how to scale your business up to six figures and one of the biggest and most common mistakes that I've seen amongst my students. And that's it, we're gonna get straight into the video. Straight into the video, scaling your FBA business to six figures. So this will be applicable whether you've got an Amazon FBA business or you know another online e-commerce business. You might be selling on eBay. You might be doing lots of other things. This is just a general uh, business principle that I want to highlight to you guys and make sure that you are aware of it because when you're looking to scale a business to six figures, and that's something that I have done. I've built my business up to multiple six figures. My Amazon business. I've also helped many students in my Elite Academy to do the same thing, which is you know why we introduced the 100K Elite Club and the 200K Elite Club. But there are, um, there are mistakes that you can make along the way that will drastically slow down how, um, that will slow down the speed that you will reach that level. And someone, have, someone actually asked me about a week ago, what does six figures actually mean, right? What is it, you know, the, the six figure club or the, you know, the two comma club, all these things, the two comma club is very different, but six figures is essentially a hundred thousand pounds or more, right? Six figures plus. I built a multiple six figure business on Amazon and uh, we are looking at this on an annual basis. So how to build a six figure business. So it's generating a hundred thousand pounds plus in sales annually. Now, I'm gonna give you some examples, guys, and show you, you know, in real time, the mistake that you can make, whether you are an existing seller or whether you're just getting started, ready for 2020, a mistake that you can make and the detrimental impact it can have on your business and how it can prevent you achieving this, right? Which is what everyone wants to achieve. When I set out on my Amazon FBA sort of venture and journey, business journey, I wanted to get to this point as quickly as, as I possibly could. And this is one way to ensure that you do that. So let's have a look at the first slide, guys. Now, what I'm going to introduce to you today is something, and don't freak out when you hear these, you know, these words. It looks like a lot of information. I'm going to break it down for you guys so you've got a clear understanding of what on earth I'm talking about. But we're going to look at compound investment, right? So essentially what we're talking about in um, you know, easy to digest terms is using um uh, your investment to generate more money and reinvesting that money to make even more money again. So how we're actually using what we've gained through an investment to invest more and then earn more and what we call and we refer to as compound investment. You probably heard of compound interest, um, a similar principle really just applied to something something different. You know, if you, I'm not going to start talking about that because that will go into a totally different kettle of fish. So but essentially we see here generating earning, earning, earnings, earnings from previous earnings. So we're gonna look at what I call the scaling cycle, guys, right? Now, if you're not familiar with what the term scaling means on Amazon, essentially when you scale, you, um, you add more products to your portfolio. So for example, my first product was making 1,000 pounds in profit per month. And once that became passive, once I'd launched and I'd established myself in the market, I then thought, okay, well, I've now got time to launch a second product and then move on to a third, a fourth, a fifth as time goes on. Now, that's what we call scaling. Now, the beauty of Amazon FBA, one of the key features is the fact that you can scale, right? Because once a product is established in a marketplace, there's very little maintenance work for that product. That's when it becomes passive. There's a lot of work to put in to bring a product to market, a lot to understand, to bring it to a level where you're making that profit and it takes time. But once you've done that, you uh, you put very little time into a single product and you start moving on to your next. You know, I've got 18 products that are all live on Amazon now, and I don't do much more than I did when I had two products live on Amazon now that they are established, right? So that's called scaling. So imagine that 1,000 pounds a month in profit, if you were to launch 10 products and the same thing were to happen, you would have 10,000 pounds a month in profit, and that would be through scaling, that process of scaling. If you didn't scale and you just, you know, uh, earn that 1,000 pounds profit a month, spent it and then reinvested in that single product, you'd keep earning 1,000 pounds a month. So you'd be you know, stagnant, uh, if you will. Excuse my voice, well, guys, I've, I had a birthday party on the weekend and my voice is a little bit, a little bit croaky, but I sound like I've, 
I don't know, smoke 20, 20 Bensons a day, which I don't. <laughs> but let's have a look. Number one, so the scaling cycle, guys. Let's look at an example of an investment of £1,500, right, into your product, into PPC, into lots of different things, right? Quite a, um, a, uh, a fixed figure there. We're using a round number. We're not having any sort of any 0.5, you know, 50p or 20p. We're going to keep this simple. I want to keep this as simple as possible. So we're investing £1,500 and we've got 100% return on investment, right? All I mean by that is what we're investing, we are making back. So 100% ROI. You'll hear that term a lot. I talk about it in the course a lot. So it's a, I've used an example that we can sort of, you know, you can apply to yourselves. If you're investing 3,000, you can just double all the figures, right? Um, if you're investing 3,000 at the start, you can, you can double things. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean when I start talking. So we invest 1,500 into our first, it could be your first product. It could be whatever product it is. It could be, you know, you could be a year into this. You invest 1,500 pounds. You get back 3,000. So essentially you've made 1,500 pounds in profit. Okay, now you um, then reinvest that full £1,500 into the business. Right. So if we look at this year, we then move into our scaling cycle two, which will be further on, you know, further down the line. You use that full 3000 and you reinvest it in the business again. And the same principle, 100% ROI, it turns into 6000 right? And we repeat the process. So 6000 we reinvest the full amount. It all stays within the business and we do exactly the same thing and we generate £12,000. Same principle, we move across, we use that full £12,000. Remember, 6000 of that is profit. 6000 was the initial investment, so 6 plus 6 is 12. And we have done exactly the same thing again with 100% ROI. So over this period, you have got, we'll get rid of this that there. So uh, let's come back again, go away, go away. On. So we've got £24,000, um, whether it's fixed assets or whether it is cash at that point, but we'll look at it as cash. We've got £24,000 and that has come from a four-stage cycle of an initial investment of £1,500. And you haven't had to put, and this is the key thing here, you haven't had to put any more money in. So you haven't had to, you know, go to the go to a um, a, a loan provider or get a credit card and, and actually put more money in. We have reinvested the profits from each cycle into the next with the same principle, just on a larger scale with more volume. Now, what I want to talk about here, guys, and the mistake that people make, and I talk to so many people. And I can see why it appeals to people. And it's something that I didn't make this mistake when I started. I was quite aware my father had run a business. I had brothers who'd run businesses. I, although I was I was no expert by any means, I, I knew that I shouldn't just be spending money willy-nilly, right? I don't think I've ever said willy-nilly before, but it was the first time for everything. So if we look at the next example, we're going to look at the same example, but each cycle you decide to spend £1,000 of your profit, okay? Now, when you are selling on Amazon, right, the whole, the reason why people sell on Amazon, people have lots of reasons. For me, personally, it's about time, okay? So I always talk about it, the money that it provides, and over the last three years, I've been fortunate enough to generate a, a very, very healthy full-time income through, passively through FBA, and the income hasn't been the great thing. The great thing has been the freedom. I've had the best three years of my life building and scaling my business and then helping hundreds of other people do the same thing with theirs. It has enabled me to travel the world. And I, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do that. I'm, it's not about you know bragging to you guys. It's just showing you what's possible and what you know a, a normal guy has been able to do. And again, that process has been replicated by hundreds of my students to sort of to reinforce the process and prove that it does work. But I was tempted, right? Like everyone is, and a student, one of the reasons that this um, this video was brought to my attention, why to actually, um, why to record it for you guys, is because a student asked me, me whether or not they should uh, take money out from the business. And this was the explanation that I gave them. And I sent this over to them first and then thought, you know, I'll share it with you guys. It'll be worthwhile showing you what I, what I mean. So, if we look here at the example, we this is the initial example. If we go on to the, the second example, we can see that at each stage of the process, I've removed £1,000 in profit 
um, from the cycle or from the stage, which has then impacted how much we've got to reinvest in the second cycle or in the next stage. So if we look at the first, for example, it's exactly the same here, 1,500 to 3,100% ROI. However, of that 1,500 pounds profit, I decide to take out a thousand pounds to spend. Maybe it's on a holiday, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, which then impacts, let's assume I spend that thousand on this, that, and the other. It impacts how much I invest on the second stage of the cycle. So now I've only got 2,000 pounds to invest instead of 3,000. Now that will then, um, and you can see it's sort of like a domino effect. It will then impact our return for the end of that cycle. So we are, have the same 100% ROI. However, we only get 4,000 pounds out this time. We do the same thing again and we decide to remove 1,000 pounds from the business to spend it on clothes or whatever you want to spend your money on, which then brings that four back down to three and we reinvest the full 3,000. Again, we double it with 100% ROI. We decide to do the same thing and take another 1,000 pounds out of the business, which brings that 6,000 that would have gone up here down to 5,000, which then uh, we have 100% ROI, bringing it up to 10,000 and we're going to end it at that point, right? Um, we're actually going to ignore that minus a thousand, right? Take rid of it, get rid of that, get rid of that one. So, ten thousand pounds is what we're left with. Now, look at the difference here, guys. And let me shrink, shrink my little head there. Now, if we look here, if I get rid of that. Good. If we have a look, the difference here, we have taken out of the business three thousand pounds. That's all we've taken out. We've taken one at scaling cycle one, 1,000 at scaling cycle two, and another 1,000 at scaling cycle three. So only 3,000 pounds has been taken out of the business. However, when we look at the difference between what's left at the end, we've got 24,000 left with example one, and 10,000 left with example two. So even though we've only taken out 3,000 pounds from the business, there is a £14,000 difference in what is left over at the end. Now, that's obviously very, very important because the 3000 that you think will just be 3000 turns out to be 14000 when we compare what's left at the end. And that's because of compound interest and the impact that the you know, withdrawal of the money from the business has had on future investments. And guys, we've got to remember, you know, when we're looking at, examples like this. The whole point of Amazon FBA, in my opinion, look at it as a two, three year process. Don't think about it as making a you know quick quid overnight in the first month. That's not what it's about. This is a, a viable, legitimate business model that, and you need to treat it like one and uh, as such. And you want to be reinvesting absolutely every penny of profit that you make into existing into your existing listing and, re and reinvesting in stock and also scaling and adding products to your portfolio to rinse and repeat the process. And we can see here why. The money will come, right? At the end of your first year, you might have an opportunity to take a dividend out of £5,000 or £10,000 from the business. And you might have already scaled to a significant point by then, depending on what you're investing. Potentially after two years, you've got a business that's generating twenty, thirty, forty thousand pounds per month, having scaled right the way up, and you're in a position where you can take money out. But when you take money out right at the beginning stages, especially when the profits are lower, the impact is catastrophic, right? It's a very, very poor and negative impact on the business. And it's why we need to focus on the long-term goal. The long-term goal is building a six-figure business that's consistently and passively generating you income you can then decide what you want to do with excess profits that maybe you don't need at the moment because you're not scaling at a rate that requires all of them at the same time. So just something to bear in mind, guys. It's so important. And again, this student, with this was my advice. If you're watching, you'll know who you are. This was my, this was my advice to this student. This is what I did. And it you know, has put me in a, a very healthy position at the moment. And it's you know, what I teach within the, the Elite Academy.
So yeah, I hope you enjoy that, guys. We are getting nearer to Christmas. It is November, what are we, 26th today. So students are working hard. If you are interested in starting to sell on Amazon, I, I might do a separate video on this, but I am actually running a Black Friday sale on my Elite Academy 2.0. Um, I'm actually going to leave the discount code in the in the text in the video. Um, the course is already half price, but I'm going to be offering a further discount for Black Friday, which is you know the, a massive sale day across the board everywhere you go, everywhere you shop. So if you're looking to sell on Amazon, you want to start doing it the right way. You want to have you know support from a six-figure seller and also multiple six-figure seller and also a network of six-figure sellers, five-figure sellers, and hundreds of sellers in general who will network with each other. We've got one centralized source of information, uh, over 150 lectures, the most comprehensive course in the UK uh, on Amazon FBA. You have my full mentorship plus dozens of other bonuses. You can take a look at the website below as well if you guys want to get involved, ready to change your year for 2020. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.